Let's talk about that hallowed graveyard of authors. Yes, I'm talking about the one-third mark of your novel. This destroys more people than I care to mention. So let's talk about that. But first, my name is Michael Laron with Author Level Up, helping you write world-class stories better and faster. And I make these videos because I believe that each of you has Stephen King-level talent, and you just need help unlocking it. So don't forget to subscribe and click that like button and the bell to get notifications whenever I have a new video. I was in the process of writing my 37th novel, and I got to right around the between the 25 and 33 percent mark, and all of a sudden I had no idea what came next. And I realized, oh crap, here we are again. I've been here 36 times before the, the one third mark. All right. Now I bet many of you have also been stuck right around the one third mark of a novel. As I said, it is the hallowed graveyard of authors. Why is this? Why do we get stuck at this point? I have some theories behind it. The first theory is that when you start your novel, you are on a sugar rush right you are just like hyped you have you know you know you're super excited that you got going and you've got that energy it's kind of like going on a road trip and you know you got all your snacks you got your music packed you know you're ready to go you're getting the car and that first hour of the road trip is cool you're nodding to your music and then right around that second uh, hour you start glancing at the clock and then you look up and you drive and you glance at the clock again, and only one minute has passed, and it feels like 30, and then it becomes a slog. It's kind of like that, all right? So it, it, I also, another way I like to describe it is that the honeymoon phase is over. <laughs> so now you face reality, and you're like, oh, crap, what, what am I doing? I have no idea what I'm doing here. That's my first theory about why this happens. My second theory about why this happens, and it's, it, it kind of meshes with the first one. If you think about the structure of a novel, many people would agree that the first quarter or so of your novel, that's kind of when you're setting things up, right? You're introducing the main character, you're introducing the stakes, you're introducing the setting, you're introducing the supporting characters, you're introducing the villain, you're introducing all these things, and you, you kind of have to do double duty. Like, you have to pay a lot more attention to that first quarter than you do anything else because that that's your only chance to hook the readers, right? So if you don't get that right, you know, you're going to have a harder time getting people through your book. So what I think happens is you've done all this work and you've set everything up and then it's like a traffic jam because now you've got the hero, supporting characters, villains, A plots, B plots, settings. You got all this stuff that you set up and now you you got to you got to figure out how to make it start playing together. And I think what happens is that your subconscious realizes that it's a traffic jam and it's trying to figure all that out and untangle everything to get everybody in their in their lane. But what ends up happening is you get the writer's block and it feels like agony. Now, how do you navigate through this? I want to give you some practical tips to help you get through this one-third mark. Tip number one is to remember that at least for me, my personal experience, and again, I've been doing this for a while, the one-third fog that you have usually only lasts for a few thousand words or so. It feels like more than that, but it's usually only a few thousand words, and then you're back off to the races again. So if you understand psychologically that it's just your mind playing tricks on you, then you will arm yourself to get through it faster. My next tip is to take frequent inspiration breaks. So Yes, I, it, it kind of contradicts what I just told you to keep sitting down and putting your butt in the chair and, you know, typing. But there is something to be said about taking some breaks to inspire yourself. So what I like to do is I like to go walk my dog and I might take my dog on extra block than I normally would. Uh, taking naps, reading a book, watching Netflix, although don't, don't procrastinate. <laughs> but the key is that you're looking for a spark. Right? You're looking for that one thing that will help m your subconscious make that connection and then get you back off to the races. That should be your goal. So if anything, it should be to step away from the computer with purpose so that when you come back, you can come back to the races. I have a little game I play with myself when I, when I come across this particular problem. What I like to do is, you guys know I like to listen to a lot of podcasts and audiobooks, and I, I read books a lot. 
what I do is I say, okay, I'm going to go and watch something random on Netflix, or I'm going to go mow my lawn and listen to a random episode of a podcast that I normally listen to. And there is going to be one thing in that podcast that will end up in my next scene in the novel. All right. So I'm listening for that one thing. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, maybe I can do that. Oh, that's an interesting thing that he said. The interesting philosophy. I wonder if maybe, oh, okay, maybe I can put that in the novel. It works like magic when I do that. My next few tips are just some universal tenets of writing that are almost always true and will help get you through some of these rough spots. First tip is a very common tip. It's almost to the point of a cliche, but whenever you feel stuck, Just throw a man with a gun in the scene. (laughs) It works like magic. It really does. It's like crack, you know. Nine times out of ten, if I throw a person with a gun or some sort of weapon in the scene, it just takes the story. It just jumps it off. It's like pours gasoline on it and makes it a lot more uh, easy to power through. Another universal principle that I've, I've always followed is whenever the words are coming slowly or maybe I'm not feeling as engaged about the current chapters I'm writing in, I write quickly through those chapters. I don't write sloppy, but I write quickly through those chapters. I try to take a brisk pace through the end of that chapter. And the reason for that is because your mind plays tricks on you. If you, if you find yourself thinking, "Oh, that's crap, that sucks," you know, that the, the writing on that is not very good, it could be highly possible that your mind that that's not actually accurate. When you come back to the manuscript with a clear mind when you're further down the road, it actually could be fine. All right, so when you get to this point, always assume that whatever your brain is telling you is bad isn't bad, and the opposite is also true. Always tell yourself that whatever your brain is telling you is good may not be, and just focus on getting through, power through, right? As, as best as you can, get it right the first time if you can, and then move on. And then when you get further down the manuscript, and you come back, you'll have a cooler head, and you may find that the words weren't as bad as you thought. Next thing, keep writing every day. Momentum is everything when you hit this spot, because what a lot of people will do is they, they, they step away from the computer, they take a break, and then nine months later, they still haven't written a single thing. Taking a break is one of the most dangerous things you can do at this one-third mark. Keep momentum as much as possible. It's kind of like going to sleep after you hit your head. Not a good idea, all right? Keep momentum. Even if it's just a few hundred words, that's okay. Even if it's 10 words or 20 words or 100 words, that's okay. As long as you make a little bit of progress every day, again, this doesn't last for more than a few thousand words. It will eventually pass. And if you didn't know, I have a book that covers all of this in great detail. It's called The Pocket Guide to Pantsing, How to Write a Novel Without an Outline with Confidence. And you can get your copy at authorlevelup.com slash pantsing. Do you struggle with the one-third mark? I would love to hear your comments and tips that you have to help everybody else on getting through it. Let me know in the comments. And if you want more writing videos on productivity and being the best version of yourself, Sit tight because there's another video coming up right now.